All right. Welcome to week five of the Texas League video podcast. Uh, excited that we have a special guest this week. I am one of your hosts, Dwayne Debomaro. Uh, as always, we have our commissioner, Professor Cowan. We have Robert Deuce Caldwell here, and this week we have a special guest. Guest, please introduce yourself. Oh, Chris Kirkwood, DBT in the league. I think I've been in the league like six years now. I think so. <laughs> no, it's got to be longer than that, Chris, because yeah. I've been in the I've been in the I've been in the league like thirteen years. Yeah. <laughs> you were already in the league with <laughs> Joy. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, if you remember, we mentioned uh, in episode one that uh, the connector between most of the people in the league is our commissioner, Cowan. Um, The four of us first met and interacted through our mutual love of NCAA football, which is an awesome football game that due to a lot of legal issues went away a few years ago. but yeah, we had we used to have a ongoing league where we would battle each other in dynasty mode uh, in NCAA football. And so all four of us, plus our missing member, uh, Jamil Marcel Brown, <laughs> it, we used to have a great little rivalry going on the league. And I know that we are all happy that that game is going to be coming back soon. So shout out to EA Sports. And, you know, if you do need some beta testers, you've got a few of them willing and ready to participate um, in the future. All right. So as we like to do, let's start off talking about this previous week's uh, NFL games and some of their fantasy implications. And so as we love to do, we definitely like to touch on the host's favorite teams. So let's start with the Chargers versus Texans. Dr. Caldwell. Well, all in all, it, it turned out to be a good game because we got the W. That was the important thing. Um, I, I expected us to beat Houston, but for some reason, my Chargers have that ability to play down to their opponents and give them just a slim shred of hope to come back and try and win. We decided to counter and actually finish the game, so we actually got the W. It was kind of nice to see Eckler get in the end zone a couple of times, not for fantasy purposes, but it's just nice to actually see him get his first touchdown of the season. First two touchdowns, I should say. Um, Herbert's starting to look better, but you can still tell he's a little hobbled. I still think they should have held him out the week before last, but that's just my personal opinion, both as a fantasy person and as a Charger fan. I think Chase Daniels could have handled that dang game against Jacksonville instead of getting it blown out like we did, but it is what it is. Um, all in all, I'm happy that we got that win. You know, we're in second place in the AFC West behind the Chiefs because they decided to take a stumble one game back. All in all, I'm pretty happy. We had a good week. Indeed. I was, you know, with Kenan Allen being out a second week in a row, uh, I was kind of surprised that uh, Mike Williams didn't produce um, like we kind of expected him to be by being the focal of the pa- point of the passing game, potentially. Uh, but what I will say is, um, you know, when the running game was working and underneath passing game, the Eckler was working, I'm not surprised that they stuck with what was going right. So. He still got over 100 yards. He got his 120. So, I mean, he still produced right. on 11 catches. So, you know, it wasn't too bad, but I expected him to get a lot more deep catches. Yes, especially against Houston. You know, I mean, they 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 do have um, a very – they have a, a good young DB um, in Stingley. But mm-hmm. I didn't – even – I don't know. I didn't watch the game, so I don't know if he followed him the whole game. But even still, I would still give the veteran the edge over the the young DB. Actually, I think Stingley caught a stinger, didn't he, a couple of times in the arm, if memory serves. Because he tried to go up against Williams, and Williams kind of stood there like a big old brick wall. Stingley hit him and hurt his arm, came back (laughs) in two plays later, hurt the same arm a second time. Ouch. No bueno. All right. All right. So then we will move on to the – Buccaneers versus Chiefs, which was a game that we weren't sure was going to be played because of Hurricane Ian last week, but ended up being played um, as scheduled. So talk to us about that game and the fantasy implications, Jared. Uh, the Bucks fumbled the opening kickoff and everything just went downhill from there. The offense actually produced, which I'm sure you were happy about, is a Brady and Evans owner in fantasy. 
but <clears throat> the defense just came out flat. And because the defense came out flat, the offense put up 31 points. The defense allowed 41. And the defense has been playing good the first three games, and the offense has been flat. <clears throat> so. That's our that's our usual fourth uh, host, <clears throat> Jefferson, chiming in on his dad's favorite team. <laughs> That's what I say, Jefferson. Hey. Okay, thank you. <laughs> you know, he just wants to make his, his weekly appearance. Indeed. So Mahomes was in peak Mahomes that game. Um that run around kind of playground layup toss to Edwards Hilaire was just you know, that that's the Mahomes we saw the year that they won the Super Bowl, like just running around, making plays with his feet and his arms, just keeping his eyes downfield. Um, you can tell that he wanted revenge from that Super Bowl. Like this does not make up for losing the Super Bowl, of course. Um, but I heard him mention in the game in an interview early this week, you know, people were asking, you know, hey, do you think this would be your last game against Tom Brady? And he said, you know, I think I've played. I think this is my third or fourth time playing my last game against Tom Brady. So until I actually line up and look across the field and don't see Brady in his team's jersey, then I'll believe that the last time I played him <laughs> was actually the last time I played him. Um, but there was great connection between uh, Mahomes and Kelsey. Uh, Chris, what did you see from Kansas City? Okay, see, they, uh, like you said, Mahomes is went play like Mahomes. Also, I was saying that CEH had, what, 92 rushing yards TD and that one reception TD. So kind of had like a little breakout game, kind of, sort of. And then, um, like you said, Kelsey was just Kelsey, man. He's just catching the ball, you know, 92 yards in the TD. I think he had nine receptions. So that team is going to be hard to beat when they play like this. Well, I certainly hope that they are definitely beatable on next Monday. Uh, <laughs> all right, Chris. So now we will talk about our guest host, favorite team, which is oh. Steelers. So yes, please, yeah. please, let's talk about this. <laughs> I want to yeah. talk about this. So, so talk oh. to us about what happened in that Steelers Jets games and, and, and the fantasy implications that you saw. Look, before we even get started. My, I told my father-in-law last week, because he's a big Jets fan. They from New York. They from Brooklyn. I said, Jets going to beat us. He's like, ah, oh, nah, Pittsburgh going to win. I'm like, no, he not. And exactly what happened. Trubisky was being Trubisky. I think he was, I think he only had like 80-something passing yards, doing nothing. Uh, the offense just stale. Like, we were not even trying to pass the ball down the field, which is hurting us. No, right now, a lot of my little Steelers page, everybody's ready to fire the OC real quick, Canada, because you can't throw the ball down the field at all. Like so but but, but that can't be surprising that you're having <laughs> trouble pushing the ball downfield. It's not like you didn't know who Mitch Trubisky was when you signed him. <laughs> yeah. Like did, did did they just forget to request game film from Chicago? I um, guess I don't know because I was the same <laughs> way when we signed him. I was like, why are we signing this dude? And they I ain't was got like, WGN in Pittsburgh, clearly. I mean, <laughs> what a, what about the Bears passing attack over the past three years? Told them, oh yeah, Trubisky's the one to come <laughs> in and stretch the field. That. That's what we've been missing in our ability to get the ball downfield. Mitchell Trubisky. <laughs> I said the same thing. And then, you know, we went ahead and put the rookie in at uh, halftime, which he threw three picks, but one was a Hail Mary. The one that Claypool, I didn't really get to see the play. So they said he threw it up and Claypool, I don't know what happened exactly on that play, but I know he got picked off. And then uh, the one he forced that one to Faramuth. I don't know why he tried to throw it. He even came out in the interview and said, I shouldn't have forced that one. But he I didn't know why he forced it to Faramuth. You should know this by now, Chris. <laughs> what is a rookie or bad quarterback safety blanket? The tight end. Tight end. Your favorite player. <laughs> I'm just saying. every it, The tight end is going to be the safety valve for a young or bad performing quarterback who can't throw the ball downfield. So, I mean, he looked up and was like, F it. Fire move got to be somewhere over there and yeah. try to throw it. <laughs> so, and off his hands, I'm like, all right. But he did have two rushing TDs, so it kind of 
you know, he's moving without the ball, you know, running off. But I don't know. We'll see this next game. Right. Go ahead. We got to Chris, let me ask you something. Let me ask you something about your, your defense. Oh. Why they can only get one sack against Zach Wilson? Look, we only had three sacks since uh, Watt been out. Watt went out? Yes, three. Yeah. Three. It's, it's, so is he on the return IR or is he on the season ending IR? No, return point? IR. He got okay. a couple games left. Yeah, he'll be back, but still, like, come on, defense. You got to get a sack. Something. I mean, you pressure. held him under 100 rushing yards, so moral victory. I mean, I don't know how we <laughs> want to play this, but. No. <laughs> is it is it really a moral victory when you hold the Jets? Yes. Real quick, without looking it up, who's the Jets starting running back? Who I'll wait. Who? Who exactly. <laughs> Who? I don't even know. <laughs> wait, somebody said it. Who? It's Brees Hall. Brees Hall. Really? And you knew that before you looked up the stats for today's game or after? <laughs> I knew that before because I watched him torture K State in college. He went to Iowa State. Fair enough. I'll give you that. But I guess his, his first run last year went for 75. But again, yeah. you're still talking about the Jets and you're talking about this year. I will say this though. If you ask everybody outside of Brees Hall's immediate family and alumni fan base, <laughs> who does he play for? You have a less than 50% correct rate. <laughs> yeah, I don't know All what to right. say about my Steelers. If we win seven games this year, I'm lucky. But, all right. So why couldn't they get the running game going? Najee is just, I don't know what's up with Najee. I think he only had like, let me see. Oh, he, didn't, I mean? have, he didn't have many he didn't yards have much at, at all. Maybe 15. At all. At all. I don't even remember. Oh, yeah, because he's I mean, his stats on the year is not looking very good. He had 58 attempts, 202 rushing yards, one TD, like one TD. So, I mean, you got a close game, and you got a, a, a strong weapon in the backfield. So I guess for me, it's just, you know, why are you putting so much into the hands of your rookie quarterback? Like, why aren't you putting it into the hands of your running back to try to close the game out for you? Like, that's that was a little bit mind boggling for me. me. Me too. I don't know what's <laughs> going on with my Steelers. Mike Tomlin gonna be on the hot seat. A lot of people are already talking about we need him out, but I was like, I don't know who we're gonna get. <laughs> Look here, he ain't going nowhere though. Yeah, uh, <laughs> pe- people who think that they have it bad when you've got a long-term successful coach and you just want to change my question to them is who do you want like who do you get who do you think that's so much better than Mike Tomlin that you want to move Tomlin out and move this imaginary person in like I, said, I told them the same thing on my little group thing I said who are we going to get and nobody can answer me I'm like okay then <laughs> exactly because this, there's no good answer to that question like Okay. All right. So then that brings us to my favorite team, the Las Vegas Raiders, who went into this week's matchup sitting as one of two winless teams in the NFL, uh, but who emerged with their first win uh, after beating the Broncos. And I know you guys know I reposted the clip. I don't often make guarantees, but I guarantee to win against the Broncos and they did deliver. Now I might've been wrong on some of the, fantasy implications i really thought it was going to be uh they were going to be beaten through the passing game but josh jake's had a career day um you know around 130 yards two touchdowns um and you know he he closed out and he closed out the game um broncos scored in the fourth quarter to cut the lead to two and we basically rode jacobs all the way downfield to the end zone uh, to close that game out. And then the defense came out and forced a three and out to get us the W. Uh, so I know you like the Raiders shirt. If you like the Raiders hat, shout out to DBIC clothing for the, the custom Raiders fit. Uh, but fantasy wise, it was really good to see um, Devontae have a good game. Uh, and I should have had this, but he had nine receptions, a little bit over a uh, hundred yards. So, very solid game. Um, there were a couple of throws that Carr made to him that were exactly what I was talking about. Um, 
there was a throw that he made. It was back shoulder. Um, the ball was already out before Devontae was even finished with his route. But as soon as he turned his head around, he was able to locate the ball, make big reception. So I think that the trust factor is continuing to develop between the two of them. And I think it's just going to get stronger as the season goes on. On the other side of the field, uh, the Broncos running backs are a problem um, for them. Their run game had, I can't remember if it was two or three total fumbles between both of the starting running backs. One fumble by Melvin Gordon ended up being returned for a touchdown, which was a big boost. Um, passing game looked good. Cortland Sutton had a very good, strong game. I think he ended up with 14 uh, total fantasy points. He had one really good, deep reception. Um, but other than that, Russ had a solid game, um, he used his arms and his feet to produce but again he cooked just enough to not get the w so i'm okay with that uh <laughs> well, see, the funny thing about rush using his feet he only got 29 rushing yards and he was their leading rusher so when he's your leading rusher <laughs> with under 30 yards right you're one-dimensional as far as i'm concerned your right. offense is 100 one-dimensional and you got butterfingers popcorn eating melvin gordon i mean no and, <laughs> and you know and, and so you know um uh, Williams, I'm not, I can't remember which quarter he got injured, but he got injured and Gordon actually was hurt that game. So he, after the fumble return for a touchdown, I think Gordon might've had one more carry. Um, but like we had Williams injured, Gordon out, the run game was done um, after that point. So it'd be really interesting to see what they look like. I think Melvin Gordon is, scheduled to play this week Williams is out though so it'll be very interesting to see um, what their run game looks like so they picked up Latavius Murray Did they? so they must have contacted him on the plane coming back from London <laughs> because I know that the Saints moved him up from the practice squad um, where he was able to score a touchdown in London for the Saints unfortunately they weren't able to get the W um, so man, Broncos move fast, picked up Murray. Very nice. He's a familiar player, former Raider did the good things for us back in the day. All right. So let's take a look at one thing I wanted to talk about NFL. And I talked about this in our group chat. Why won't coaches take the easy points? I do not understand why coaches continue to outsmart themselves. Because I think a lot of them are looking too much into analytics, even though I love analytics. Y'all know that I do, and I swear by analytics all the time. But I think they're so fixated on the analytics that they are forgetting the simplest part of the game. Get your points where you can get your points, because that might be the difference. Agreed. Uh, Jared, go ahead. Up, oh, well. Maybe Chris, you want to chime in? <laughs> Jerry back. Yeah, I don't know why they don't take the points. I would have took more points. You never know you're going to get that chance again. And then that field goal could be the difference of the game right there. In, in case anyone isn't clear about which game in particular we're talking about, because there was a couple of them. Um, so Panthers Cardinals, as before we get to the main example this past week, Panthers Cardinals first quarter. Panthers went forward in the first quarter on fourth and one from their own 39-yard line. Didn't get it. Cardinals got the ball. Cardinals then drove down to the Panthers' 10-yard line and didn't get it on fourth and one instead of kicking the field goal. Now, you just saw your opponent screw up on fourth and one. Why would you not then just take the points? Like, you now have an opportunity – to give yourself a plus three on this possession. Why would you just throw it away? Now, it ended up that the Cardinals had a phenomenal fourth quarter to close that game out. But anyway, the biggest example of this on Sunday, of course, were the Buffalo Bills versus the Baltimore Ravens in Baltimore. Now, you at home, you've got the ball on the two-yard line of a team that you know can move the ball that you know can score points. Yes, you have Lamar Jackson. 
But in a game that is as close as this, if you have the chance to take the lead and put the pressure on the other team to produce points, why wouldn't you take it, Jared? Like Deuce was saying, some people believe so much in analytics that common sense goes out the window. <clears throat> we know how you feel. Always take the points. But football has been played for, what, 100 years now? And people just don't want to listen to what's worked for all these years. They want to be, well, analytics say, and we know how <clears throat> the the math man over here feels about analytics. He said that, but sometimes you just got to use what our common sense, go with your gut, because analytics hasn't been around for 100 years, but the game has. When in doubt, take the points. Boy, like, thank like Chris, you. Analytics like has Chris, been around a lot longer than 100 years to be technically correct. Let's, let's but, not not matter, applica- so. but not applicable well, to it? sports. Oh, is that fair enough? If, if you tell me, so if you told me as the coach, right, if, if you come off the field and you say, I just had a gut feeling we had the right play call, I'll respect that more than, well, if we, cr- we looked at the numbers and we looked at the play sheet and it told us, you don't believe in it. If you need the play sheet to tell you to make the right call in this situation, you don't believe in it. That's but and that's me. And then you know, who was that? That the who? What defensive player was that for Baltimore that got pissed off and was yelling at Harbaugh? Uh, I can't remember who it was. Um, one of their defensive players basically said the same thing. It's like, dog, you put us in a messed up position, like. We've been fighting Josh Allen, one of the most dynamic quarterbacks in the game. We've held him to 20 points. You got a chance to go up three. What are you doing, man? And then the excuse he gave was, oh, you know, well, we got the ball on the two, and if we don't get it, they got to go 98 yards. Well, they didn't because you called a play that had Lamar Jackson backing up into oblivion to try to throw a jump ball into the end zone. Last time I checked, Lamar Jackson was one of the fastest, tallest, most athletically gifted players in the world. Where's the RP? So you mean to tell me you got RPOs in your playbook for Lamar Jackson for every situation except this one? Come on, man. You got to get that man. You got to give Lamar Jackson a chance. If you're going to put the ball in Lamar Jackson's hands, put it in his hands. If you're going to go for it on fourth and two, Put it in the former MVP's hands. We Lord knows we've seen him do it since college. I mean, Heisman, NFL MVP, fourth and two. Why would the ball be in anybody else's hands but his? But hey, that's just me. What do I know? I'm not actually a coach. I'm just a dude who thinks he knows a lot. <laughs> All right. So let's let's jump into our league's games from last week. All right, so as we mentioned, (laughs) uh, week four was going to be a tough week for both uh, Deuce and I, as we were the last two teams that were without wins going into week four. So we'll let Deuce talk very briefly about his game and its results. Well, there wasn't a whole lot I could do in my game. You know, I thought Carr was actually going to do more than he did, kind of like how Dwayne thought at the same time. And really, not right now. Sorry, my daughter was trying to jump in. Um, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm looking at my thing. Okay. So, yeah, Carr only having, what, 188 yards, I think. Um, I honestly projected him to have like 330. I expected to have a couple more passing touchdowns, so he, I didn't get a lot of points there. And Williams got me some points, but honestly, everyone else didn't do a whole lot. That's why I'm sitting here at, like, I don't know, 79, but I couldn't even break 80. Uh, it was over for me quick, unfortunately. I lost the lead Thursday because I didn't have anybody playing, and I never got it. Mm. So, <laughs> just 0-4. That, but you that know is, what? That's okay. That's, that's, a tough, okay. That's, that's a tough place to be, my brother. Um but unfortunately, you were not alone in your loss this week. 
Kirkwood versus okay. Armed Rodgery. Talk to us about your game. Well, my quarterback only had 16. He normally averaged 20-something, but, you know, it was like a monsoon out there with all the rain. So, hey, I only could do so much. He only could do so much. My boy Deontay had, I think, three points total. And then Curtis Samuel didn't do much either. But my boy McCaffrey had 21. <laughs> 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 that he did. <laughs> that he did. <laughs> he ain't really been doing that all season, but this game he had twenty one. So well, he had, finally he, he finally scored a touchdown. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was a receiving touchdown, but he scored. Yeah, right? Most of his yards were all receiving. He only had like twenty seven <laughs> rushing yards. Yep. Which is, I don't know what. Uh, anyway, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I don't know what to say about him either. And then. You know, my tight end wasn't bad. He had 12. C.D. Lamb actually had a decent game at 18. And then I just, from like Thursday night, just Joe Burrow had 24. And then he just took off. And then Eckler, one that tore me up. Eckler had, what, 31, 32? Yeah. You, oh, you needed good. Eckler to have a, a, a week one through three game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> For you to have a chance to get that one right. Yep, Eckler tore me up, and then you know Kelsey gonna do what he do. So that was, and, and he did. <laughs> <laughs> Even if I put like in my ultimate lineup, he someone not playing. Yeah, and he has somebody not playing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I was, I wasn't gonna touch on that because I, I feel like that was just that that was just adding insult to injury. Uh, he forgot yeah. to sub out Michael Thomas, and God dang it. I thought that might have helped you have the advantage. So I, I, I do feel bad nope. for you. On that one. <laughs> All right. Mr. Cowan, you, on the other hand, were able to get the W. <laughs> Talk to us after you unmute yourself <laughs> about how you beat the shirtless one. <laughs> My team didn't perform well. His team didn't perform well. But my bad was better than his bad because I had Cooper Cup. <laughs> that about sums it up. Not to yeah. mention Deuce's favorite ex-charger, Melvin Gordon, with the negative production this week due to his fumble. <laughs> that always helps the cost. Definitely. Definitely nothing wrong with that. And Stefan Diggs not blowing up like he normally does. I think, truthfully, that was the difference. Stefan Diggs had eight points. He normally good for 15 and 20. And that would have been the difference in this matchup. So you, you thank, thanks for the rain in Baltimore to, <laughs> to keep that passing game at bay uh, for the Bills. <laughs> so you can thank uh, Mother Nature for the assist on the weather on that one. And so that brings us to my game. Um, I was down after the Sunday night game and I was down 14. And as we've mentioned before, sometimes on Monday night, you need a player to perform badly. And sometimes on Monday night, you need a player to perform well. Well, this Debo needed a solid 15 points from Debo Samuel on Monday night football and the Chargers went out and did, uh, I'm sorry, not the Chargers. Ooh, Jesus. San Francisco teams. Uh, I mean, California teams. Uh, the 49ers went out and beat up on the Rams, but most importantly, Debo Samuel's 50 plus yard touchdown reception was the thing that put me over the top. And then he had a couple of more catches to uh, pad the final um, total, but that gave me my first W of the season, and I also knocked off the remaining un uh, team that had not lost so far this season in our league. But one thing I do want to talk about is the Big Green. So our our defending champion, we had a lot of concerns about her team going into this week, and. I believe we all picked her to lose <laughs> this particular game and her players and her team said not today. So Tyreek Hill, who had a great game Thursday night, um, played with two different quarterbacks 
uh, Tua and Teddy Bridgewater, but Derrick Henry, um, Derrick Henry was ripping off long runs from the beginning of the game to the end against Indianapolis. Um, proven again, like I told somebody in the fantasy offseason, Derrick Henry is, he plays the AFC South six games a year. His yards and touchdowns against the AFC South alone are enough to qualify him to be a top five fantasy running back every year. And you can see this was a typical uh, AFC South matchup game production for him. Um, again, Jamal Williams just continuing to produce uh, up there in Detroit. Interesting thing about Detroit that I saw after Sunday's unfortunate loss for them, where they put up 45 points. They lead the league in scoring at 35 points a game. They also lead the league in points given up at 35.3 points a game, <laughs> Percy. So that, unfortunately, is why they are one in three on the season up in Detroit. Um, Hawkinson, uh, 35 points. Now, as a person that's been a Hawkinson fantasy owner in the past, I can say he's good for one or two of these a season. And he absolutely went off in a game where they had to throw a lot. He found himself himself open over and over again um, against that Seattle defense. And I know Pete Carroll couldn't have been happy about that. Um, but so we want to give a shout out and salute uh, to the big green for coming up big in their matchup last week. And getting the high points for the week. Not only the high points, but again, we got a we got a trifecta: high points, the W, and the biggest blowout of the week for the team. All right. So that was last week's pick. So now, where do we look in the standings after last week's picks? Because you know we got to check that out. Looks like somebody has a slight lead after <laughs> a picking one game <laughs> more picking one game more than the other two gentlemen from last week uh, puts me at the slight lead. But like I said, you know, we all missed on this on the two games because we want we want our boy Mathis King to get his first win. So, but it wasn't just a, a you know a uh, emotional pick last week. Just looking at the matchups. Really thought Mathis King had the edge, but you hang with Hernandez. I don't think any of us saw, you know, damn near 40 coming from Hawkins. Basically, she got 70 points from the Detroit Lions. Like, who knew? <laughs> Wouldn't have guessed that. All right. All right. So that takes us into this week's games. All right. So one of the things we want to talk about this week going into the fantasy matchups, we always want to talk about how injuries may affect the games of the week. So one thing we already mentioned this week, of course, is the Denver Broncos backfield being uh, having two injuries, possibly definitely having Williams out, possibly Melvin Gordon questionable. So they signed Latavius Murray, but we also have, another injury to the Falcons backfield and Cordell Patterson going on the IR. Um, Jonathan Taylor did not practice, but like any other fantasy owner would tell you about Jonathan Taylor, it's not like he's actually producing enough points to make a difference in the games at this point anyway. So I don't know. I, I really hope that he's okay physically, but I definitely need him to turn that, uh, status into some points on the football field. And I'm pretty sure that the real Colts fans would appreciate that too. Uh, the Giants wide receiving trio of Galladay, Robinson, and Tony, they're all battling injuries. And you don't know 
who Daniel Jones is going to show up throwing to, or if Daniel Jones himself is going to be out there this week. He went down with an ankle injury. Then his backup, Terod Taylor, had a concussion. So, (laughs) you know, injuries, this is that time of the year where teams are going to start getting beat up a little bit, and fantasy owners really have to make sure they're watching those injury reports um, especially when you, now you're dealing with Thursday night games, you're dealing with international games from London, which are going to start early on Sunday morning. So you're going to have to make some of those start sit decisions, um, maybe sometimes flipping the coin, but it's almost at the point like, do I, if you play a questionable player, then you really better be hoping that that player shows up and doesn't, you know, stub a toe or tap a pinky finger or something before kickoff if they actually are in the game for you. But one of the biggest issues that came out of week four in the NFL was concussions. Chris, our guest, talk to us about that Tua concussion situation on the Thursday night game. Man, he should have never been in the game. You could tell from the other night when he when he got up and started walking, trying to run, and he fell down. Wasn't no back injury. You could tell he was dazed and confused and everything else. I think one of the doctors got fired. That They should have known better than that. Like, he should have known better. Like, look, I don't need to play. I got a concussion. He knew he had a concussion, but he wanted to play. But sometimes players just want to be there for their team. But, look, you got to look out for your health as well. Indeed. Uh, Cowan, what do you think? <clears throat> kind of like Chris was saying, these players, a lot of them want to get out there and help the team. Because I know I talked to some of my college teammates. We were talking about times that we went and played when we shouldn't have, but we weren't playing with concussions. Like, it was obvious. Like he said, I was sitting here watching that game last Sunday. He got hit. He came up looking like a drunk on Bourbon Street. I'm like, no, nah, bro. He shouldn't be. Let me get back in the game. There's no reason he should have been in there. But the biggest issue is if he had not got slung on Thursday night and got to that game, it would have been an issue. But because he came, he came out there Thursday night and got injured again, they had to come up with a scapegoat. <clears throat> so the doctor got fired. When like I think what it was is he played Sunday. He knew they had a big game on Thursday. He wanted to play. They kind of told him, we don't think you should play. He said, I'm playing. He went out there. And now this week, I think a lot of people who might have been borderline on the concussions front were just ruled out because of that whole situation. Because there were some players who just took like a bump and they're like, oh, they got a concussion. I think they're going to overcompensate in the next couple weeks in the league, which is also going to affect fantasy players because – you know, let's just say since we got Chris on here and he got Christian McCaffrey, he takes a bump this week and he walks off the field. They might all, okay, he got a concussion. We're not even going to risk it <clears throat> because of what happened to him. Now Chris loses his uh, his number eight pick in the, in the draft over a concussion. That might not actually be a concussion. Yeah. But I guess the thing, now they might just err on the side of safety because of the Tua situation. What do you think, Deuce? Yeah, Chris and Jared actually said all that needs to be said. Uh, another thing that taken co- into consideration is the coaches need to be held liable. They knew good and damn well he wasn't. Yes, I get as an athlete, you're like, no, I want to be out there. I can make the difference. I get it 100%. Sometimes you got to save the athlete from himself. Damn anything else. Damn how you're going to appear in the papers. Because just like Jared said, had he went out there and like, threw a great game, nobody had said nothing. It just kept trickling down the hill. We've all seen this from high school until now. It sucks, but it, it's an unfortunate part of the game that's going to get somebody killed. Coaches need to be also held liable. Like, no, I'll put my foot down. Or the GM, you ain't playing. I'm like, you're, you're an investment. I'm paying you $100 million. I need that $100 million to be able to play longer than one damn day. <laughs> yeah, that it was scary enough seeing the initial hit on Sunday against the Bills. And, you know, how quickly, because again, you've played football, you've watched enough football, you know when a player hit their head and you know when a player hurt their back. For them to come and try to switch it up and say, oh, that was a back injury against the Bills, that made zero sense to anybody. Like that, come on, man. 
like we we can like you know we can see it like like we can actually see what happened on the field like this isn't radio where no one can actually see the games we saw it and then on thursday night when he hit the ground and his hands curled up like that like that was a scary moment because I actually thought his hands curled up so much. I was like, well, did his hand hit the ground? I thought maybe his hand hit the ground and he had broken a finger. And that's why his hand was curled up. But when they showed the wide shot replay and you realize, oh, he got slammed on his head. And that was an involuntary reaction from his body. And yeah, I the Dolphins coach is talking about, oh, he was on the plane and he was laughing and joking and watching TV. Anyone who's had a concussion would tell you watching TV is one of the worst things you can do. So you talking about how much you want to protect your player and you the coach, what you doing watching? What you doing letting one watch TV on the plane? I thought you're trying to protect his health. So they've, they smartly went ahead and ruled him out for week five because there's no way that they would have been able to, I don't, no matter what protocols he's actually passing in practice or actually passing this week, there is no way that they were going to be able to send him out there this week and not reap the outrage of every single football fan, every coach, every group that wants to basically ban football because there are parent groups that want to ban football in little leagues, high schools, whatever. They were going to point that to say, see, they don't play. They don't care about the people that play this game. They don't care about safety. And so I do think that there's going to be an overreaction, an overcorrection for a couple of weeks. Um, they already announced between the NFL PA and the NFL that there are going to be some changes to the protocols, but of course they fired the doctor. He was the scapegoat. Um, not a good week for uh, NFL doctors or NFL affiliates. Uh, I know we mentioned that to Rod Taylor, who's also in the concussion protocol after going in the game on Sunday for the Giants. He actually recently filed a lawsuit against the San Diego Chargers uh, team doctor. I don't know if he's still the team doctor or if he's the former team doctor. Deuce, is he current or former? He's former. No, he's former. So, so he's because uh, the Justin Herbert uh, career starting moment was Terod Taylor was getting a pregame pain injection and the doctor punctured his lung <laughs> before the game with the needle. <laughs> and so everyone was confused because, you know, pregame, you have Terod Taylor warming up, getting everything started. Then they kick off. After kickoff, Justin Herbert jogs in the field. So everyone's like, what the heck is going on? Anyway, though. So, yeah. So 15 or 16 players right now um, are currently in the concussion protocols, according to the NFL injury report. Um, some of them were coming off a concussion, uh, like wide receiver Hunter Renfro, who had a concussion um, in week two but who was held out of week three, I think if things wouldn't have happened the way they did on Thursday night, he would have played on Sunday. But because of what happened, it kept him out for week four too. So um, we'll see. I think the NFL is going to overcorrect for a couple of weeks. Now, I saw one article that was just ridiculous that said Tua should retire. That's just a bridge too far. So, <laughs> But uh, I, I do hope that they take that man's injury seriously along with all the rest of these players and we continue to see uh an emphasis put on player safety all right let's get into this week's picks let's start with armed rogery versus big green chris you're our guest we'll let you tell us which team you like what you like about both teams and then you can make your pick well, um, let's see. I see Eckler got a matchup against Cleveland. Cleveland ain't defense been okay. Now I like that pretty good matchup. Kelsey, uh, I guess your Vegas team. It's going to be a tough one. But I like uh, Kelsey over there. The, then on the other side, let me see. I don't know. 
what Tyreek Hill is going to be able to do without a quarterback. We'll see. Oh, you didn't see Tyreek's quote? Yeah. That. <laughs> a reporter asked Tyreek Hill, uh, how do you, do you think you're going to be able to produce with Teddy Bridgewater at quarterback? And his response was, I'll produce with you at quarterback. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Tyreek said he don't care who's the quarterback. <laughs> he's going to score. He's going to put a, he's going to produce. Yeah, then I see Henry got that matchup against Washington. He should be able to run on them. Uh, Williams, if he has another game like that, man, and they play New England, you can see Detroit been putting up numbers. I'm kind of going with um, what's the name? What's the team name again? Oh Lord, what do you like me? Like Big, Big Green? Or yeah, Armor? Big Green. I'm going with Mayors again. The Big Green. All right, so you're going with Big Green. Who do you like, Cowan? You know, after a 150-point performance, you know, it's kind of hard to to go against this team. But uh, last week, this team was not carried by their quarterback, who's just a placeholder. <clears throat> I don't believe Hawkinson, like you said earlier, he has like one or two good weeks. I don't think this is one of them good weeks. I don't see another 35-point performance. And I will say that the New England defense has not been as good as they have been in the past. Very true. So, so I don't I see I still putting up some points, but I don't see them producing like they did last week against Seattle. So I'm gonna have to go with uh I'm gonna have to go with Arm Rodri in this one. I don't know that the New England defense was able to force overtime against the Packers. I mean, they lost, but they still forced overtime. <laughs> but okay, so you're going with Arm Rodri. Who do you think, Deuce? Uh, you know, I went back and forth on this several times. I agree with everything Jared actually is saying. I'm curious to see what Henry does against Washington. I think Henry's going to actually have a really good game against Washington. And I think Tyreek is going to produce against the Jets. He's going to show Pittsburgh what they should have done against the Jets. Um, I see Lazard doing something good against the Giants secondary as well. However, with all that being said, with our placeholder at quarterback, not producing a lot of points, even against Minnesota, I have to root Mr. Cowan and say, well, hold on. Who do they got on the bench? Um, I believe they still have uh well, yeah. Oh, so Dak, Cooper, but he's Cooper. out. So yeah. Okay. No, nope, I'm going with uh, arm Rodri. <laughs> 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 So you don't believe in Cooper Rush? I mean, what no. if, if she if she put Cooper Rush in there uh, against the Rams? The Rams? No. After we after we just saw what Garoppolo I know. did, and because of that, the Rams defense is pissed now. <laughs> you think AD's not happy and Ramsey not going to be? <laughs> oh, fair enough. Um. I still like the big green. Um, I still like the big green in this game. Uh, I do think that, you know, I think we'll see a switch at quarterback. I think that she'll end up putting Cooper Rush in there. I think Cooper Rush is the better play this week. He has more weapons around him and actually can throw the ball, unlike Justin Fields. Uh, I think that'll end up giving her the slight edge. Uh, Alave had a great game um, in London, but back-to-back game teams that come off back-to-back games when they're coming back from London, they that jet lag I think is going to affect them this week. So I kind of like the big green. But think about what Kelsey always does to the Raiders, especially in prime time. I'm just saying it won't be enough, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> That's my wishful thinking. Okay. Okay. But yes, Kelsey is Kelsey. Uh, so it, so it's not like it's just a Raiders thing. Kelsey is Kelsey against every single team. So that's the AFC West, unfortunately. That that just is what it is. All right. Next up, we got our boys Ed Corn versus Super Mario Cristobalin. Oh, I'm going. Jared, you usually do review of your cousin's team, but I'm actually going to throw it to to Deuce this week. Talk to me about these two teams. All right. The shirtless wonder versus Super Mario Crystal Ball. All right, let's see here. Honestly, I'm more I'm still worried about Herbert. I am. 
but I'd be more worried about Cleveland's non non defense, especially with uh, Miles Garrett not playing. So he's not going to have to worry about Miles coming after him. I see Herbert having a pretty solid game. I see Nick Chubb having, unfortunately, a solid game because we don't like to stop anybody from running. We think you can just go and run all over us. We'll just try to outthrow you and hopefully outscore you. Um, Nick Chubb's going to get his points. Waller is going to get his points because uh, Carr's going to need someone to throw it to when he's getting harassed all the damn time. So he has his little tight end safety blanket. <laughs> San Francisco's defense is a joke, so I don't even know why the hell they're even on here. But I don't know. Because I don't it's think Carolina and points. Baker Mayfield. That's you know what? what? Well played. You know, fair <laughs> point. One hundred percent fair point. Um, now, when I look at Mr. Acorn over here, he got Mr. Fumbleia. So, man, I, Waddle's the best thing. Waddle and Rogers is the best thing on his roster. Let's, actually, let's... Diggs is playing against Pittsburgh. Now that I just see that, <laughs> Diggs is going to actually. They're going to throw the ball back to Diggs a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, Let, let's assume that Gordon can't play on. Thursday night, which I think is a good assumption. A great assumption. Who does he have in his flex? Uh, let's see. Who does he have in his flex? He's got Waddle, he Waddle in his flex. flex. Okay, yes. so if Gordon doesn't play, he has... He actually needs a running back. He really does. So he's got... He got, he got running well, back. Well, you know what? Just... Mozart, you can put in Mozart and be okay. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be better than the negative points from Gordon. <laughs> right, exactly. But all that being said, all that being said, I got Super Mario Crystal Ball and winning, and it's not going to be small. All right. Jared, who do you like? Uh, you know, I I just refuse to, to go with the shirtless wonder with Gordon in his life. The man who just got negative points. Can we really... Kyle, Kyle Pitts, who they got blocking. Why, why do you have the first round pick blocking? That's not what he does. Let me see. What did Pitts do last week? Yeah. <laughs> they still not doing anything. I mean, good grief. Three points from Kyle Pitts. <laughs> that, that's just disappointing. That's just not good. So, who are you rolling right. with? Uh, I'm going to have to go with – I'm gonna, in the battle of the, uh, the, the under six-footers, I'm going with Super Mario Cristobal. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, who do you like? I'm going Super Mario too, man. This is I don't see Diggs about the only gets my Steelers. He'll have a good game. Like you said, Piss is doing nothing. And then I think it's gonna be a blowout. Super Mario. Uh yeah. I'm also gonna go with Super Mario. Um I think that wide receiving trio is great um even with good production from chase last week i don't know if cincinnati's clicking along far enough Balt speaking of people defense that are going to be pissed off this week baltimore's defense is going to come out pissed off after losing that close game last week um and they're going to want to redeem themselves in prime time um so i also am going to roll with super mario on this one uh yeah. All right. So next up, we have Company Man versus DBT Kirkwood. Jared, talk to us about this matchup. You know, if you want to unmute so we could actually hear you, that would help. <laughs> One time per call, he's known to do that. At least he's consistent. <laughs> you got to be consistent. As I was saying, Mahomes, Clyde Edwards, Hilaire, they uh, they've been producing. And Mahomes is Mahomes, and he's playing the Raiders. And the, the division matchups are always – they always something. Uh, Khalil Herbert, as long as he is still the man, as long as Montgomery doesn't come back, he should produce. And he's not, and not, at least not for another couple weeks. So he should produce. <clears throat> Barkley playing against the Packers It's always a toss up because Barkley's one of them running backs. He just just 
yard here, yard there, and he busts off a 30- or 40-yard run. And they beat that. The Packers' defense is pretty solid, so I don't know if he's going to produce like most people. You know, I don't have actual stats exactly to tell you who's the number one fantasy running back so far this season, but I would have to just at a glance think that Barkley is somewhere in the top three. Him and Edwards Hilaire have to be pretty close um, in their production along with Williams from Detroit. Um for a player who, you know, has battled injuries over the last couple of years, as you can see, he's been producing pretty. I mean, he hasn't had a, a under 10 point game so far this season and not a lot of running backs can say that. Yeah, I just looked it up and he is in our league. Saquon Barkley is the number two running back. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, he's been producing. As long as he stay healthy, he'll produce. Indeed. But then, then we got Chris over here with his team. <laughs> Jalen Hurts versus Arizona. Arizona ain't really played much defense on anybody. They just let everybody run the score up. Curtis Samuel and Johnson. I don't like really – well, Tennessee's defense is just average. You have, I don't really see them just – being no, no shutdown defense, but I don't see him just letting Washington go buck wild because they got Carson Wentz at quarterback. Ramondre Stevenson might be the key for Chris's team because, as you said earlier, Detroit don't stop nobody. The way that the way that uh, Rams defense was looking last night, CD Lamb might have a good game, but then again, Ramsey might decide he's gonna try to lock up. CD Lamb to prove that he's still who he said he is. Yeah, but can he wanting to do something versus actually being able to do it? <laughs> is Jalen that guy? <laughs> that's what that's what they say. <laughs> they say or he say because <laughs> <laughs> they say. Previous years, he was that guy. He don't look like the, that guy this year. Like Lauren Hill told us, sometimes it all falls down. <laughs> all right, who you picking for this game? Uh, I'm I'm gonna have to take Company Man. I think he's trying to get. He, he was undefeated. You took his. You, you said his O must go. So now he's trying to get back on the winning track. I'm gonna have to go with this one. Um, I agree. I'm also going to pick company, man. Uh, based on the fact that Amari Cooper only has good games at home, and he's at home <laughs> versus the Chargers this week. So uh, okay, we're going to let him catch the ball. We're going <laughs> to let him catch the ball. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I see a good game coming from uh, Cooper. Uh, and, of course, again, Patrick Mahomes. Again, I don't feel bad about saying that Mahomes is going to score against the Raiders because he does it to everybody. So, I mean, that's it's not a stretch to say that Mahomes is going to do what Mahomes does because he's that guy. He actually is that guy. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go with company, man. And Chris, <laughs> you have an opportunity to pick against yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Even though I have a feeling I'm gonna lose, but I'm not gonna pick against myself. <laughs> hey, picking yeah. against myself one week is why I have the lead in correct <laughs> picks this season. <laughs> There's no pride here. <laughs> yeah, but like you said, man, he got Pat Mahomes and Barkley. Just he's been tearing up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see myself winning. <laughs> but are you actually going to pick against yourself? Yes, I'm going to pick against myself. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, are you Dr. Company Deuce. Man, Chris? <laughs> Chris, pick, Chris is picking Company Man. <laughs> yep, picking Company Man. <laughs> you know what? We are all 100% on board with Company Man. I'm, I'm sorry, Chris. I love you like a little brother I never wanted, but I can't, I can't say you're going to win, bro. Yeah, that's going to be – that's a tough one. <laughs> All right. So my matchup, uh, after playing company man in back-to-back -back weeks, <laughs> I get muff divers. So let's go with Chris. Break this one down for us. Let's see. 
Lamar Jackson's gonna come out. He's gonna do what he do. Jefferson's gonna do what he's gonna do. Penny actually had a pretty good game, but I don't know if he could do it back to back. Um, um, then on the other side, Brady against Atlanta. I see Brady tearing Atlanta up again. Mike <laughs> Evans, yeah. <laughs> Mike, Mike came back, had two CDs, so Mike. Sutton had a pretty good game, and Indy hasn't been playing that good lately. Only thing is, is Taylor, man. It's kind of a, he's not been that guy that we thought he was going to be. You got Egram. Then you got Smith for Philly. I think Philly have a good game. Smith will get some catches. So I'm going to go with Debo on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that, good sir. <laughs> Dr. I'm gonna Deuce. go with you. Muff divers look good, but I'm gonna go. Did she get another win? <laughs> I appreciate that, Doctor Deuce. You know, as much as I'd love to agree with Chris, I can't today. Uh, for, <laughs> I, but I agree that Taylor is a question mark. Now, normal well, last year, Taylor made just about everybody look stupid. Now the Colts didn't might not have been so hot, but Taylor was hot. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's going on right now in Indianapolis, but you know, Taylor has the potential to go off against Denver. And I would love to see it. And I don't agree that Tom Brady is going to annihilate Atlanta. He's had issues with Atlanta. Um, and he's a little older than he used to be. He's about our age, Debo. So, I mean, we ain't out there slinging the rock. Because we know that. We ain't out there getting divorced from our wife. Because we know that. You know, we try, we try to do our thing. But, you know, I'm curious to see what Jefferson is going to do. Going to the other side. Jackson's I'm going to run through Cincinnati. I ain't even worried about that. He's going to get some points. Penny, I think, is going to get points running through New Orleans. But to me, the biggest question mark is going to be Taylor and Jefferson. Whoever scores the most points wins this game out of those two. Whoever scores the most points out of those two wins the game. Personally, I give the edge to Muff Dyke. Fair enough. Mr. Cowan. I'm going to have to agree with uh, Mr. Caldwell. I'm like the matchup to look at is Jefferson versus Taylor and Taylor gets Chicago. Chicago's defense is not good. They made the Houston Texans look like a credible football team. <laughs> so I'm, I mean, I'm, they say I'm a beat a dead horse. I trust no nothing from Chicago. I don't. So I think Jefferson, I think this is the game. Him and Cousins get it together, score a few touchdowns. I don't trust Taylor because he's questionable going into a game on a short week with a bad ankle. I, I get saying? that. Fair enough. Uh, Justin yeah. Jefferson. Um, you know, other world talent. He, he's either really good or really bad. Right. And some of that is directly related to Kirk Cousins' play um, in the game. So if we were to put this up against Kirk Cousins points in the preceding games, we'd see that they match up. Um, I am going to pick myself. Um, I think that if there was ever a team that you would want, if one of the teams that you want to play against, if you're a running back right now at this point in the season is Denver, Um, their defensive front four is not very good. And you just saw what Josh Jacobs did. Uh, to them on Sunday Uh, the Colts definitely have one of the better offensive lines in football so it's kind of head scratching about why uh, Jonathan Taylor hasn't gotten it rolling but I think that he's going to be motivated on the short week Um, if he plays he's going to score and I think Jonathan Taylor because that's really been Jonathan Taylor and Tom Brady have been my sore points in the games that I've lost this season. Uh, Brady had a Brady-esque game last week. Um, And I think that that loss to the Chiefs is going to fire him up. He's going to come out throwing. And I hope he keeps throwing to Evans often. (laughs) So I think I, I like myself in this matchup versus Muff Divers to get my second win of the season. All right. Sure, just two picks. We have our chance to catch up and tie them. We're getting it wrong. <laughs> so. 
<laughs> All right. Next pick, Stairway to Evans versus Hanging with Hernandez. Now, on paper, this looks to be a blowout for a Stairway to Evans. Um, Geno Smith, I think people are, I think that the fantasy projectors are still down on Geno Smith when Geno Smith has actually been producing pretty good this season, not only uh, with his arm, with his feet. Like he's, this game was just a bad game all around for the Seahawks as a team. But I mean, 320 and two touchdowns. And I believe he had another one on the ground on Sunday. That's nothing to sneeze at. You know, Seattle is letting Geno cook since that other chef they had went to Denver <laughs> and started cooking with CBD products. <laughs> <laughs> it's legal there, so that makes sense. <laughs> exactly. Um, I think that uh, Hollywood Brown is going to continue to be himself. Um, if Kyler Murray can actually see down the field, he's throw it up and say, screw it, Hollywood's down there somewhere. Um, so Philly's defense is going to want to get into the pocket and flush Kyler early and often, but I don't know if they're going to be successful. Um, they've had some game. They're still undefeated at this point, but they're getting scored on like that defense will give up points. Um, looking at the other side, Kirk cousins versus Chicago. Again, if you're talking about a team that you want to see right now, if you're trying to come, if you're trying to put up some points, Chicago is one of those teams uh, the Cowboys defense. Now, this, I think, is going to be the first game where we see Cooper Cup be human. Um, so far this season, again, lowest game so far this season being 14 points, like on pace to break his record that he set last year for most points in the fantasy season by a wide receiver. Uh, A.J. Dillon kind of a head scratcher because you know the Packers have that you know they kind of share the load in the backfield between Dylan and Jones and right now Jones has been getting the lying share of the the points like he's getting plenty of touches he's just not getting the end zone and when you have a shared backfield that goal line touch or that goal line target is generally the difference between the two um that being said I'm definitely going to roll with Stairway to Evans in this particular matchup. I think that he has more favorable uh, games for his players coming to this week. Um, even though I need Brady to throw touchdowns, I don't see Fournette being neutralized like he was last week against um, the Chiefs. Like the Tampa Bay fell behind, they just had to throw pretty much the rest of the game. So Fournette was never really able to get rolling like you usually would see him do. But I can definitely see him scoring, um, at least getting a touchdown and getting at least to 10 points this week. So I like Stairway. Jared, are you picking against yourself this week? <laughs> Why would I do that? <laughs> I, I I'm you know, I've decided if I look at a matchup and say, you know what, I don't think this one's in my favor, but I think this one's in my favor because, yeah, I just – the matchups look promising. And as long as the people produce, then I think I can I can win this matchup. I'm okay. still trying to figure out <clears> – I'm just still trying to figure out when I'm going to get a running back. I almost had one, but thanks to the Texans, they messed it – you know, I was I was literally gonna send a trade offer for Eckler. I'm like, he's been producing low. Let's see if I can I can buy low. <laughs> nope. Then he played the Texans and they're like, before I can send this trade offer, I'm like, mm. <laughs> cold blooded. <laughs> I heard you like Deuce Caldwell. Uh Sir Wade Evans. Just because right. to your point, he has a better favorable matchups. Just hands down. And I, I don't know, I don't care what anyone says. I'm not sold on Geno Smith. Nothing's gonna sell me on Geno Smith. Sorry. <laughs> Yes, he might be doing well, but he's playing for Seattle. So, no, no, can't do it. Well, if his receivers can manage to stay in the game and not have to get carted off to the bathroom, hopefully, you know, he'll be able <laughs> to keep the players on the field that he gets to throw to. Who do you like in this particular matchup, Chris? Same stat with Evans. You look at it. I see just the matchups. I see Andrews catching a couple of TDs this week. 
And then I, I don't see uh, Tampa Bay with only having three rushing yards this week. They had three rushing yards total as a team. I don't see that again. No way. Yeah, I, I can believe that. Um it was like I said, by the by the second quarter, yeah, I was. mean, the Chiefs jumped out so hard, you know, they just had to throw the ball to try to get back in the game. So, all right, so we have a consensus. And that brings us to our final matchup of the week. Two boobs, two balls, one goal versus math is king. Chris, break it down for us. <laughs> All righty. I see Mike Williams having a pretty good game against that Cleveland defense. Uh, Dalvin Cook, if his shoulder's okay, and playing Chicago, I see a pretty good matchup favor there. Then uh, let's see who else. Kyler Murray against Philly. I don't know about that matchup. That's kind of, we'll see. Uh Elliot, I haven't really seen much out of Elliot this year, but they are playing the Rams, so we'll see. On the other side, yeah, Zeke really nine points last game, fourteen yeah. before. Only one rushing touchdown so far this season. Yeah. Not not very Zeke like at all. You no, know, Shannon Rock with Pollard, so yeah, averaging like fifty five yards a game. Cut the brother some slack. See, not bad, but he ain't you, you game, need so. Zeke to score it. You need Zeke to score a touchdown. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> well, on the other side, I see Josh Allen this three, four touchdowns gets my Steelers easily. Uh not three, four touchdowns <laughs> easily. <laughs> easily. <laughs> this gonna have two of them, <laughs> at least two. <laughs> it's the way my day defense plan. Josh Jacobs, I see. Oh, that's going to be a tough matchup. But if he could tote the rock like he did last week. Uh, Brandon Cooks actually had a pretty good game. And they are playing Jacksonville. So, but, but Jacksonville always give Texans a problem. So, uh, so what do you think that uh, two boobs gets the win or Math does Mathis King get the upset? <laughs> I'm going with two boobs. This Josh is gonna be too much Josh Allen. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Mr. Cowan, what do you think? <clears throat> kind of like the uh matchup we just looked at. I like the I like the matchups for two boobs. You got Josh yeah. Allen versus Pittsburgh. They defense, like Chris said, hasn't been great. You got a you got AJ Brown against Arizona. Arizona's defense has not been good. They just did enough to they got, win the game. They have a no name secondary. <laughs> they really do. I don't know. <laughs> like the old Nebraska, like the old Nebraska defenses. They have a no name secondary. <laughs> you got you got Adam Thielen versus Chicago. I, I, I believe this is the week that Kirk Cousins gets his act together. Because if he don't, he he's gonna be benched on my team, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> I don't particularly think Jacobs is going to do much this week. I think kind of like the Bucks, the team going to get behind them and they're going to have to pass it. It's going to be it's going to be shootout esque, and I don't think Jacobs is going to be there to grind it out like he was last week. But I think he'll I think he'll be decent. Mixon versus uh, Baltimore. I think that the, the Bengals are going to try to run the ball to keep Lamar off the field. He can't be <laughs> he can't be a fantastic player he is from the sideline. Brandon Cooks is like the only option here in Houston. Him and his rookie running back who's come on lately. And like I said, I I'm looking at your team, Bruce. So I see some promising players, but Elliot has <laughs> I don't, like I don't. In the past. <laughs> they have promise in general. Is Dalvin Cook? Can you know he got the shoulder thing? And they they are playing Chicago, so he should be able to do something. <clears throat> but I, I don't see you getting that. I don't see you getting that W this week, sir. I got to go with two boobs this week, sir. As much as I would love to pick Mathis King for his first W this week, I don't think it's going to come. 
with this matchup. I think um, Zeke Elliott's going to be facing the pissed off Rams uh, defense. Um, yeah. I, I, George Kittle actually has a chance to have a decent game. Um, Carolina's defense is porous, um, as we saw last week against Arizona. So, but even then, like, unless he has a Hawkinson like game from this week, <laughs> like, I, I just, I just don't see enough in the matchups to get you the W this week. And I, and I, I hope I say this, although I am picking two boobs, two balls to win, I still hope that I'm wrong and that you do get the victory, but I'm, I am officially picking against you, my friend. Mm-hmm. Right. What do you think, Mr. Caldwell? <laughs> so, you know, I'm going to sum this up with something that we said earlier. St- uh, analytics don't always tell the whole story. <laughs> now, on paper, on paper, and in the program that I wrote, I'm going to lose by about 40 points. And that's okay, because these things happen, unfortunately, to me this year a lot. But my heart won't let me pick against my damn team. So I'm picking Mathis King to win <laughs> this week. in the story. I don't even need to say nothing. Else. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Well, there it is. All the picks are in. Um, there's going to be a lot of good football uh, this weekend, uh, Thursday night. We've got the Broncos and Colts, um, both teams. So even though the Broncos have two wins, uh, as we said ourselves, one of those wins didn't count. That 11 to 9 win, that don't count. It might count on the standings, but it don't count in nobody's heart. <laughs> so basically, they're both one win teams going into this Thursday night matchup, both of them coming off of losses on uh, on Sunday. So we'll see what that looks like. I believe we have a London game this week, if I'm not mistaken. We do. And that's the uh, the Packers game, right? I heard this. I think it is. Okay. So, yeah, the, the Packers game is also coming to us from London. So, watch yeah, out Packers for that. Packers New York. Yep. Packers and Giants. Oh, that. And both of those have uh, fan bases that travel well. So, I'm yes, suspecting that we're going to see a lot of uh, blue and green and gold in those stands. And, of course. Are you going to go to a London game? I'm going. Hands down, I'm going. Hey, it's a great experience. An international game. So, I've gone to the games in Mexico. Um, and I have friends of them going to games in London. The international football fans are amazing. And they're not even always team fans of the teams that are playing. They're just football fans. So they show up mm-hmm. um, and they will wear whatever jersey of whatever team <laughs> that they love to the game, guaranteed. Um, then, of course, Monday Night Football game this week. Uh, Raiders get the Red Hot Chiefs. We got to travel into enemy turf for our uh for a back-to-back division game so hoping the Raiders come away with the win uh fired up no one asked you (laughs) no no one asked you listen you just worry about the Chargers (laughs) but uh yeah remind me who do the Chargers have this week the Browns See, I can't even talk smack because, I mean, <laughs> I sure wish they had a better opponent so I could actually talk a little smack. But ugh, that's the Browns be. without Miles Garrett. So I feel pretty comfortable. Right. Yeah, you, you should. You should. But again, as you just pointed out, miracles happen. So <laughs> true. True. <laughs> and then we, of course, we have the Bucks versus Atlanta. And I'm hoping for a huge Bucks victory. <laughs> With a lot of touchdown passes from Tom Terrific <laughs> to Mike Evans. Now, Mike Evans and Tom almost had a third touchdown. Uh, I didn't need it at the end, but I sure would have liked them to have that third touchdown connection. Uh, so I could have got the win on Sunday and not have to worry about it on Monday. And uh, Chris, who do the Steelers have this week? <laughs> Buffalo. <The Bills. laughs> oh, yeah. 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 So Buffalo. So. Good luck. To, so you hey, going little to, rookie starting. <laughs> going to Buffalo with the rookie quarterback. Yeah, good luck with that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. But uh, again, thanks for watching. Uh, we will be back next week to see how everyone's how everyone's pick was. And uh, as always, 
Best of luck to you and your fantasy teams this week.